Hey, what's up guys, it's Tariq here with another update on my uh, Bama Guardian Adventures in Reefless. So here's my character after day 2. I made it to the very end of Act 10, uh, so only thing I need to do right now is to kill Kitava at the very end. I already completed uh, Merciless Labyrinth, the third one, I killed Tavarius. Uh, did everything. Uh, the only thing that holds me back from killing Kitava right now is uh, my call resistance is really under capped. So after killing Kitava, I will get minus 30 oil res. So cold res will be only 38. So yeah, like first I'm trying to farm a little bit of extra cold resistant gear. And then I go straight to Kitava. It shouldn't take too much time, I think, to get it. Uh, so like I thought, the progression through the rest of the campaign was really easy. After I farmed uh, my transfigured mirror arrow of bombarding clones gem in um, first labyrinth. By the way, if you didn't watch the video on the first day of Ruthless Adventures, uh, make sure to check it out. So yeah, my slash play to this point is uh, 15 hours 45 minutes. So yeah, basically like I spent around 16 hours on the campaign. Like I'm, I'm really ready to kill Kitava. Let's see how the progression was through the acts and watch some uh, clips together. Here it is. Alright, so this is uh, Act 5 Kitava here. So the DPS at this point was uh, really good. Uh, I was only summoning my Sentinel of Radiance from Guardian Sensei just to get the damage mitigation mostly. And also it uh, taunts the boss on hit as you can see. So the boss attacks my Sentinel and not my character, which makes it way easier to like control uh, what bosses will do. So I don't even summon Decoy Totem anymore. I just let my Sentinel of Radiance uh, do the taunting job. But yeah, most of the damage is carried uh, by uh, my mirror arrow clones. I can summon three of them. The cooldown on the skill is only 1.5 seconds, so it's like a really smooth, really chill. They destroy everything, as you can see, pretty fast. Yeah, so there was no problems. Finish Act 4, Act 5, uh, Innocence fight was like really easy and fast. Here, Kitava fight, uh, I guess we're gonna maybe skip the rest of it. Oh yeah, basically every phase will do like this, we will go like this. I just, uh, it, it slams the ground, spawns the degen, maybe the explosion that I dodge, and it starts attacking my central radiance, and it's already down to the next phase, right? Yeah. Yeah, so let's see what I, what I drop from Kitava. There is loot from Kitava, right? Yeah, that's the last phase, okay. I think he's supposed to drop something. And then I get to add 6. I already managed to overcap my resistances. Uh, as you can see, yeah. There is 113, 90, and 115, I think. So just cold res as well, by the way. Also, cold res was a little bit undercapped. Oh, there is no loot from Kitava. Oh, that's right. <laughs> okay, never mind. Uh, let's move to the next boss. It's X6 boss, Brian King. Uh, the fight was still uh, great. I mean, my damage is still great. The boss is taunted by Sentinel of Radiance, the same pattern. So I only use uh, basically Mirror Arrow. And I curse the boss with elemental weakness. And then I just, yeah, I mean, sometimes refresh my Sentinel of Radiance. Plenty of room for like, dodging the abilities if you need to. But yeah, most of the time you don't even need to dodge. Because the boss is taunted. The boss dies quickly with the DPS I have from Mirror Arrow. At this point, there's still uh, no support gems here and no auras, by the way. So I did get one support gem later. I think it's going to be the next clip. <laughs> but yeah, let's see. All right, so let's skip. It's already boss at half HP. I'm gonna I'm gonna skip a little bit. And here's the loot. I got uh, two rares. Wait, was that rare boots, by the way? Two rares, two blue items. <laughs> Very exciting stuff. Yeah, rare boots. Well, those were not good boots. Yeah, I remember that. Let's see if I identified them immediately. No. Okay. <laughs> those bad boots. Uh, so here, by the way, uh, in the beginning of Act 7, I had the only, like, close call. So I'm playing hardcore, and I try to not take a lot of damage in my face, but here I took some damage. <laughs> Let's watch how it happens. So I don't have too much physical mitigation right now on my character. That's probably, like, the only problem. I already have some spell suppression, so resistances are kept, right? And here it is. Look, it's what's gonna happen. Oh... Yeah, I dropped quite low. It was like 20% HP left or so. See, so yeah, what happened here is... Um, 
there was a rare monster that spawned Spriggans. And Spriggans, they spawn these pineapples on the ground that uh, explode after a duration. So as you can see, they spawn pineapples actually on my minion, maybe, on my clone. I'm not sure. So I was running towards them. Obviously, I didn't notice that they spawned a bunch of like dead death mines behind me. And I'm like, oh, wait, wait. So there's no way to, to run there, and there is no way to run here because there is a ray of monster. So I decided to backtrack, and that got me, of course, because I'm running into these exploding pineapples. And boom, boom, even more pineapples. That was brutal. But yeah, I mean, you always have to be careful with backtracking in this game, of course. Uh, so probably it was kind of my mistake, I guess. But at the same time, you don't expect to have Spriggans in this zone, because I see on my Lantern of Erimor that um, yeah, there was no Spriggan monster type in this zone. But Spriggans were spawned by rare monsters. <laughs> so yeah, unfortunate, I guess, a little bit. Uh, so yeah, this is the beginning of Act 7, so in the middle of Act 7 you know you complete the second labyrinth. From second labyrinth we get elemental relics from Guardian Ascendancy. Those elemental relics double my DPS. Yeah, they just double it, so really strong Ascendancy note. And also at this point as you can see I had three green supports and two red supports so far from campaign. Um, and from the Divine Font crafting bench, uh, what I was called, uh, I get the option to swap support gem with another support gem. This is like a special reefless uh, type of craft from Divine Font. So I decided to swap this fortify supports, and this way I got my first and the only one useful support gem so far. By the way, as you can see, Nice Mike in chat called it. He said, "Swap red for volatility support," <laughs> and what happens? BAM! Volatility supports. <laughs> what just happens? But yeah, so it's a pretty good support jump because uh, especially if you have lightning damage on your bow, which I do at this point, as you can see. Have lightning damage on the bow. Uh, yeah, so this support gives quite a lot of damage to my minions, to mirror arrow clones. So that was quite lucky, I guess. Uh, so yeah, next boss, end of Act 7 boss, Arakali. So I just completed second lap, I got Elemental Relics, and I got the first damage support gem even. So let's see how boss will get obliterated. I had so much DPS at this point. And also not just at this point, but all the way after second lap. Look at this HP on the boss. <laughs> yeah, so it phased. I already dropped the boss to like 30% HP. It will get healed a little bit because of the phase transition. And my elemental relics even disappeared, by the way. But yeah, now they reappeared pretty quickly, as you can see. And yeah, boss gets obliterated. I checked out the loot. That's a lot of damage. Okay, so three rare items and one blue. Yeah. Not bad. So the next... Ah, so yeah, there was another close-ish call where I dropped, like, kind of low. Uh, not as low as in the previous close call clip, though. It happened uh, in the beginning of Act 8 here. And... It was also something that explodes on, on the ground. Oh, wait. Okay, I need to rewind. Also, ground explosions. That's classic. Yeah, I was taking spell suppression on tree. And you kill these monsters and they spawn these uh, explosions after their death. <laughs> so yeah, I just walked over them. Yeah, sometimes in this game when you kill something, you need to just like stand still for a few seconds, like cool off and... Then maybe you can continue. Maybe you will not die to just nothing laying on the ground. So yeah, I dropped to like half HP. But yeah, I mean, so far, like, it's been really safe uh, playthrough. That's like, yeah, the only two, like, close-ish calls I had. Even these calls, they were not really that close, right? Uh, here, end of Act 8 boss, Lunaris Solaris. They also will get absolutely obliterated with DPS. Uh, so, in later acts, I started finding some more corpses to craft with. So I'm gonna show you later, I tried to do a few crafting uh, projects, let's call it projects, in my grave, graveyard. So yeah, as you can see, bosses literally, like, they die so fast, I sometimes don't kill these bosses that fast in non reefless honestly. Oh, I got rare ball, that, that was a bad ball, but it's a movement speed ball though, so I was excited about identifying it. Let's see what I got here. Identified it. 6% movement speed implicit. Wow. Movement speed is really important in Reflux because like travel skills are really limited. 
Come on, identify it. Go for it. That was bad though, I remember that. And here it is. See, so yeah, increased physical damage and skull damage. Actually, and it's attack speed. That was really decent, by the way. Like, yeah. Apparently it was really decent. <laughs> well, still, my current bow was a bit better. Did I mess over my current bow at this point? I think I changed the bow after this point. So this bow is probably grave crafted, by the way. I didn't mess over. Okay, never mind. And here, the end of Act 9 boss, the Depraved Trinity. The damage was still great. The boss was still... It got obliterated. <laughs> so yeah, very good uh, campaign run so far. Absolutely no problems. Yeah, here I'm on 2 link, right? The only support I'm going to use is volatility support on my mirror arrow. It's not the best support I can use in it, but it's at least something useful. It gave me probably like 20% more damage or so. Maybe 25 even. According to the tooltip anyway. I didn't import my character to BB yet. The boss gets killed. I just run around as you can see. My minions do all the work. I just run around. Sometimes I curse the boss. Give me some G salutes. I'm excited to see that. Three raiders again. Alright. A bunch of weapons though. So at the end of Act 10. I'm doing Merciless Lab. Uh, that was also really easy. <laughs> the defenses are good, the damage is good. Let's just see me killing Izaru quickly. I managed to get disabled traps from one of the Dark Shrines. Yeah, traps are not a problem here. Ah, the, Izaru, by the way, is buffed by two conduits right there. But yeah, he got killed already. There you go. One rare item. It's gloves. The gloves I'm using are still from like Act 4 or something. I guess I dropped rare uh, gloves in Act 4. That was really good. So here I'm taking uh, block ascendancy. Yeah. I mean, we're going to take a look at the tree a bit later. So yeah, what options do I get from Divine Font? Let's see. Yeah, I got, uh, I got another transport, uh, transform support gem to support gem. Uh, uh, but I decided to go for quality because quality is pretty rare uh, occurrence as well. I got 3% quality on my mirror arrow gem. So yeah, I took the quality here. And yeah, so at this point... I, I'm in still in Act 10. I'm ready to kill Kitava. I'm sure it's gonna be easy fight. I just want to overcap my cold rest first, so that after I kill Kitava, I can just go to map straight without having to like thinking about upgrading gear. Um... So yeah, I did a little bit of crafting. Uh, Twitch chat reminded me actually about the recipe that exists. You can sell any ring, an augment orb, and a weapon. Actually, I'm gonna show you. Uh, a, yeah, see, just a ring, just a blue ring, augment orb. And yeah, so weapon with flat damage to attacks. Uh, here I have tier five, fire damage to attacks, tier five. So the result is gonna be a ring a blue ring with tier 5 fire resist because I had tier 5 fire damage to attacks. So, yeah, early on you can get some decent uh, resistances this way for a character. I got max roll 29 fire resistance here. So, that's very nice for, for capping resistances. And some more crafting I did is uh, some like. <laughs> Crafting projects in graveyards, right? So here's the bow. Um, I get some corpses. All I use here is plus five to explicit modifiers. So five corpses like that. Because in Reefless, for those who don't know, you start the craft with only one explicit modifier. So yeah, getting additional explicit modifiers is a really good idea. And I want to get plus five so that I have all six modifiers because there's no reason to save an empty slot because... Um, there's no crafting bench, so like I can't any bench craft anything, so I just go for all six modifiers. And I got increased chance for five modifiers corpse here, just because I had it, so that I was hoping to get uh, fire damage to attacks. Or maybe fire resistance as well, right? Let's go, big craft, uh, press it. <laughs> Let's see what's gonna happen, what I get. So far I didn't get a single corpse for modifier tier rating, so all the tiers of modifiers are absolutely random. And here's what I got yet. Yeah, here we go. So small fire damage to attacks, uh, pretty decent light damage to attacks though, and I get fire resistance, so that helps me capping my resistances. So there was a really good bow at this stage, but after that I managed to drop even better bow just from monsters. 
Uh, but I was happy with this craft, actually. That was uh, pretty damn good. That was like a big upgrade for me. And another great, like a bigger grave project I did is I tried to craft a quiver. Uh, let's see how that did go. So also plus five explicit modifiers, increased fire chance, increased cold modifier chance. I got it corrupted. I got the corruption corpse. So I wanted to see what corruption implicit I could get. It could be like a lot of lead damage to attacks on implicit from corruption. And let's see what I got. <laughs> Not gonna spoil it. Look at this creeping in Twitch chat, yapping. Okay, here it is. Here it is. What is this garbage? I got terrible corruption, absolutely useless. So a little bit of life and a little bit of fire damage to attacks. But I didn't get... So actually, yeah, I was trying to get even resistances on my quiver because... Uh, I'm doing this in the end of Act 10 as well, so I'm still trying to get cold resist for Kitawa kill, right? Yeah, I got no resistances, so... That was like vendor trash immediately. Absolutely worthless. So I did some other crafts in graveyards. Uh, but just like plus one, maybe, yeah, plus one explicit modifier or just no explicit modifiers. Just like create a ring with one modifier in hopes of getting resistance this way. But yeah, it didn't really work well. So right now on my character, I use no items uh, from grave. So let's get back to the game and... Uh, Check out some gameplay, I guess. Yeah, so the way I try to far, uh, get cold resistance right now for Kitava kill, I try to farm some corpses. I'm running Osri zone. Uh, extra projectiles. Well, yeah, I guess we can do that. Uh, so yeah, and sometimes I get some corpses and I craft something in, uh, in graveyards. I didn't get lucky enough with Cold Resistance so far, though, yet. So yeah, what I use, basically, I summon Sentinel of Radiance just to get the damage mitigation from him. Like, I don't really rely on damage from Sentinel of Radiance. So here's my... Uh, just I, I just spam Mirror Arrow, pretty much. Mirror Arrow, sometimes against rares, I curse them with Elemental Weakness. Bobble, yo, that's my first Bobble I dropped, <laughs> okay. Yeah, maybe I can also like resummon my Sentinel Radiance on top of the rare monster. Yeah, we kill rares pretty quickly, as you can see. Uh, mirror arrows shoot really far away, so it's pretty easy for me to almost like fully clear this zone every time I, I run it. Creates a ring corpse. That's a good one. So you can even create Amethyst rings, by the way, the Chaos Resistance ones. My Chaos Rest after I kill Kitaba will be like minus 45, so that's gonna be really scary to get some Chaos modifiers and maps. So eventually I will need to craft, of course, uh, Amethyst Rings. Let's kill this Raider. Get him, get him. This one runs away, actually, like those annoying, annoying monster type. And they also deal a lot of uh, physical, uh, a lot of physical damage here. Yeah. The monster called uh, Bone Husk. They explode those spikes. So yeah, pretty dangerous monsters, actually. But uh, it's still not, not really a problem for my character. Volatility, volatility support leveled up. So yeah, just spam Quicksilver Flask. I don't even need to use Mana Flask anymore, by the way. Just because, I mean, <laughs> the mana cost of 2 link skill is only 23, and the cooldown is 1.46 seconds right now. It's like impossible for me to spend enough mana to, to have to use the Mana Flask. So yeah, I just do like circles like that uh, in Osiri, trying to get some corpus, maybe some rare items drop. I have a little bit of... Uh, a little bit of oh, another corpse. Quality Corpse and a third Corpse incoming. Look at this. Explicit Modifier, yes. So plus one Explicit Modifier is one of the most important Corpses in Reefless. And let's see, a Slash remaining is only three monsters remain in the zone. So I like, I fully cleared it pretty much and I didn't even try to like go into every corner. Just Blink Arrow just kills all the monsters around that easily. So yeah, let's take a look at the Currency tab, I guess. <laughs> That's always fun to look. So here's my first Bobble, by the way. Uh, what I have, a lot of chromatic items, again from selling items with uh, RGB sockets. Uh, I got 9 chance orbs, so 6 alterations. I never used any chance orbs, I never used any alterations, never used... Uh... I got 4 alchemists, never used them either actually. I, I only used transmutation orbs so far actually. And yeah, some augments, I used some augments too. I found one Val orb. <laughs> Yeah, so this is the currency pretty much you get after completing the campaign in Ruthless because I'm about to finish it, about to kill Kitava. 
So there it is. I guess I could try to use some alchemy orbs to get cold resistance this way, but I thought they also will be useful later on for Atlas progression, right? And uh, gear, right? What's on my gear? So this bow I dropped, and it's a really good bow. It has tier 4 fire damage and tier 4 coal damage and tier 10 lightning damage. That's whatever, I guess. So just a lot of elemental damage on the bow. That's what I'm trying to go for. Just big elemental damage bow. That's all I want, pretty much. My quiver also has quite a lot of damage on it. Uh, fire damage attacks, some lightning damage attacks, accuracy. That... So yeah, like I said, a mirror arrow uses your bow and quiver. So your minions actually benefit from all the modifiers on these items. Then my helmet, life strength, suppression, resist. Like four solid stats. Not big numbers though, but sure. Body armor, pretty cute, right? Life to resistances. So yeah, all this gear, by the way, is uh, just drop only. Yeah. Nothing that I crafted with Grave I'm actually using right now. Nothing. Oh, this ring I crafted actually, right? You could see the clip uh, earlier in the video. So it's still a great ring. Maybe I should try to augment that for additional life on Prefix. I don't know, we'll see. So this ring is great. I just... Uh, I think I dropped it as this. I don't think I augmented that even. It's T1 life, T5 max roll fire res on a good two-stone ring base. Really good ring. So Amulet, I had it in the first video. From yesterday as well, it's just a talisman I got like an act 2 or something. Yeah, item level 17. Uh, I need to upgrade my uh, my amulet actually. So belt, just with lightning resistance, yeah. I'm struggling with capping resistances right now. That's problematic. Uh, so there it is, yeah, pretty bad belt, right? Uh, gloves I got from act 3 or 4, item level 35, it's probably act 4 then. Uh, just life and resist and some decent armor, right? So I still need armor for physical mitigation. And these boots with 20% movement speed and some rarity. Well, two useful stats. Movement speed is the most important stat on boots. I, I, I got some boots with like 70 life and double resist, but I don't use them because I really value the uh, resist, uh, the movement speed really high. And yeah, so I'm using Quartz Flask whenever I get body blocked by monsters to get away from them. Like two quick silver and two life flasks. Oh, I got so lucky with this life flask, by the way. Instant flask with bleed removal already. I'll take it, nice. And the tree. The tree also going according to the plant tree. Uh, so I'm level 72, by the way, right? Level 72. Uh, so here at the bottom right already took all the suppression with lucky suppression. I got some extra suppression in the middle of the tree already. So my total suppression chance is 77% chance to suppress spell damage. And I have lucky suppression as well. So my effective suppression chance is probably 90% plus at this point. Like almost cap spell suppression. So spells are not really too much of a concern to me. It's just physical mitigation, 1.3k armor and no endurance shard is nothing else, right? I mean, I have Sentinel of Radiance, of course, against all the hits, taking 20% of my damage to him. Um, yeah, next I will need to take probably a Flux, a Flux Master here. When you use Life Flask, remove a random non-elemental ailment when you use Life Flask. Hmm. So I'm not using Mana Flask anymore. I was thinking about using Mana Flask Mastery here. But I can't use it since I don't have it. So I got extra minion damage here, minion attack speeds. Minion attack speed also affects my attack speed, so it makes it so that I can like spawn minions a bit faster. That's nice, some quality of life. And yeah, so I got additional resistances here, practical application with some stats, and here in the middle. Hopefully, eventually, I will be able to remove them when I will get enough resistances on my gear. And Ascendancy, right? So Central Radiance just gives me damage mitigation at this point, not really damage to enemies. Uh, Elements of Relics, they almost double DPS of my Mirror Arrow clones, so really good notes. And I decided to still go for Block, yeah, for the Block Ascendancy here. So if you attack recently, you get 15% chan uh, chance to block. And my minions also get a chance to block. So I always attack because whenever I use my main skill, Mirror Arrow, that counts as attack. And you get spell block 15% if you cast a spell recently. And I quite often cast a spell as well, right? Because Elemental Weakness is a spell, Quick Step is a spell, uh, Convocation, I guess, even is a spell. Even though, yeah, so I don't really use Convocation anymore. But maybe I should. And Summoning Central Radiance is also a spell. So that's where I'm at. Uh, after two days of reflows, 
about to finish campaign and start mapping. By the way, I already got a few maps, right? It's like 61 maps. I mean, that's something, I guess. Uh, we're gonna start progressing the Atlas tree. So Twitch had told me that like, those who play Reefless, uh, some tried to progress the Atlas without even specking into nodes that give you like chance to drop maps one tier higher. They try to progress through only specking into Kirk missions, which is a given. Like you always want to spec into Kirk missions in Reefless and Scouting reports, and Harbingers. So I'm thinking maybe I will try to go for Harbingers as well. From Harbingers, you pr try to get um, Harbinger Orbs, which increase the tier of a map, plus one, right? And I guess you try to get also the, uh, what do you call it, Horizon Orb to, to switch the map within the tier. Uh, we'll see, I don't know. I mean, initially I definitely will have to go for Kyrick Mission Chance at least. And then we'll have to come up with the, with the best strats. So that's it for the Day 2 recap. Uh, hope you enjoyed it, guys, and see you guys next time.